And out of nowhere, West Ham have signed our third summer signing. Yes, you have heard me correct. Our third summer signing is over the line. West Ham have got our man in through the door. Flynn Downs signed from Swansea on a five-year contract with a further option of another year for an undisclosed fee, expected to be in the region of about £9 million. Apparently, there are some extra clauses and some targets that Flynn would have to meet in order for that fee to rise going to Swansea. But we have got the deal over the line. Roll the bad boy titles. I'm absolutely buzzing with this signing, and I'll tell you exactly why. It came from out of nothing. So do you know what? You can slag off the channel. You can slag off all the other channels, etc. What you know, what we bring in terms of transfer news, transfer rumours, etc. And what we try to do is we try to bring you the links that West Ham are linked to and see if they could be a realistic link. However, nobody spoke about Downs. Not a single person, to my knowledge, spoke about this man. This English, Brentwood, Essex, West Ham fan from Day Dot fan who has come in the door and become West Ham's third summer signing. And I love it. I really do. It's really filled me with a lot of joy in knowing the fact that business is getting done. And, and it seems to be that there's a lot of smoke and mirrors in and around West Ham. So you get sent off in this one tangent and bang, you get a deal done in 24 hours. So what we were led to believe was that Downs was very close to signing for Crystal Palace. But West Ham came in at the final hour, put an offer in. And because he is London born and bred and he's a West Ham fan born and bred, I think it was literally giving him no other option but to sign for the club. So he is a gifted passer. That's what we know about him. He's a strong tackler. He's combative all-round player who is closing in on over 150 career appearances already for the age of 23. And David Moyes obviously is a fan. Now, let me just put this record straight here. Do I know a huge amount about him? Absolutely not. When we are linked to these players, you start to do a bit more research. You look at reports, you read some match reviews, you watch some highlights online, and then you start to pick up the sort of player you are looking at. Now, he is a championship-bred player, borderline played in League One as well, but predominantly recently in his recent career played in the championship. And it's about West Ham trying to find those players that can step up a bit like the Jared Bowens of the world. That's what you want to be looking at because if you can find those players that step up from absolutely um, nowhere as well. Oh, hold on a minute. Have we got someone in the, Have we got someone in here? Oh, he's in. He's in. He's joining us again. He is joining us again. DJ Russie B. We only sign when I'm in the car. We only sign <laughs> when I'm in the car. <laughs> How you doing, mate? Are you buzzing? Yeah, mate. Really buzzing. I was it's, just, it, just as you were saying, all the smoke and mirrors and stuff, man, it's brilliant. I love it. Yeah. It is good. I mean, I, 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 I'm not trying to, like, make people under... I, I am trying to make people understand about... Because we see some of the comments that come through and say, oh, enough of this nonsense, enough of this nonsense. I love the fact we didn't know about Downs. I love the fact we didn't know anything about him coming into the club. It suits me down to a T. It's really, really good. There's so many things yeah. we didn't know about, and I know you mentioned it earlier on in the show. But it is good because it means that we go about our business nice and quiet and get stuff done. And that is what's important, isn't it? It is, man. And I think the whole thing with Downs, and it's like, it was, it was something, I can't remember what someone said today. Um, it's, you know, we talk about Divering Dave. This, well, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I very much doubt it was done within 48 hours. I think this was already in the works. That yeah, we were probably. interested in him. Yeah. And then Palace yeah. put the money in and we go, no, we, that's our boy. And we went in and did it. Um, so, I think, no, I think what, I think, really yeah, I think what I meant by that, and I think what probably most people mean by that is the first time you hear about it, 
is when it was reported on Sky Sports News literally 24 yeah. hours ago. So as you know, as content creators, we're scrambling around to try and get as much information as we possibly can on the geezer. And I tell you what, mate. I mean, and, and, and I, listen, I'm going to jump through. There's so many comments in the chat here. Um, and Matt Foster brings up the greatest point. I never even heard of him before the other day after the success of Bowen and Ben Rama. But yeah, you you are right. But what you start to build up is is we've actually potentially, um, you know, unearthed hopefully a very good talent. Now we do have a we, we have a very solid position. Um, and, and, and a big hole in the team in terms of Mark Noble leaving. So when you bring someone else in who's born and bred in the area as a massive, massive West Ham fan, um, you can't help but think that this is is only going to be hopefully a, an opportunity for him to uh, to shine. I mean, I don't want to get... I'm trying my best not to get carried away, Russ, because I've got to understand that Downs is 23. He's coming from the championship. And he's got to rock and shake Suchek and Declan Rice out of their position. And I just don't see that happening. No, no. But it, it's, it's, for me, it was, it, when you look at Downs, you know, as, as you said, I think it's important. I know it's not the prerequisite of a player, but the fact he's a West Ham boy is, is, I think, critical for West Ham fans in that we've lost Noble, we've lost David Martin, two West Ham fans, probably the only two West Ham fans in the squad, really, proper West Ham fans. So he's coming, which is great for the fans. But I think you're right. He's not coming in. He isn't going to come in as a first-teamer in terms of the first 11. You know, he needs to show what he can do to prove he needs to be alongside Declan Rice. And that's what I like. You know, where Aged arguably, is going to come in and start that centre-back position. Um Downs not so much so. So he's got a fight for his place there. And that also is interesting because Moisey always says that he wanted to get players who were first team players, you know, who were going to break into the first 11. Arguably, Downs is not going to, I don't think Downs is going to come in and walk into the first team. So he's going to have to come in and develop. And at 23, it shows that's the future. You know, Thomas Suchek isn't going to be around for another couple of years, maybe if he stays. Um, he's was he 27, 28 now? You know, Declan Rice is 20, 23. Realistically, that could be a lovely pairing for the next few years, hopefully, if Dex stays. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about Downs coming yeah. in. Fantastic Abs- pass for the ball. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think he is. I think it's, got, it's a good young English player coming in that's going to, you know, live and breathe the club. And I think that is a, 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 a void, borderline filled because... You've got a local lad who knows and lives and breathes the club. So I think he's going to come in and he's going to get really settled in with the squad and understand the ethics of what David Moyes is doing. Obviously, David Moyes has scouted him. I think apparently, I mean, let me bring up this, some of these comments that David Moyes said about bringing him in. He said, we're pleased to have signed Flynn and are looking forward to bringing him into the group. We think he's good, good, good energy. I think he's got a lot of things which he have about our team, which we want to keep and want to add to. I'm looking forward to it. He says, we brought Jared Bowen from a similar situation at Hull, so we're always trying to find boys from the Championship who we think are going to step up to become Premier League players. I'm hoping that Flynn does. I think that's a good chance, and he's got an awful lot of good attributes. So, um, I mean, according to even like the West Ham website, he was heavily involved, David Moyes, in this signing, um, and obviously done a lot of his due diligence in order to come up and, and make it in the uh, in the Premier League. But it is, I mean, for me, Russ, it's a bloody great signing I, for loads of reasons. We didn't know a huge, huge, huge amount about him, but we're, we're, we're doing our, I don't know if you can hear me there or you're there. You are there. We'll come back in. We'll... All right, there, he, he's gone. So uh, just to give you a little bit more information on um, Flynn Downs and et cetera and, and, and where he's come from, et cetera, he's a former England under-20 under, under international um, and he went on and he actually spoke out about the signing today. So let me give you some of the comments that he made um, from signing for the club today. So he actually went on and said, it's just a real feeling to have joined my boyhood club and he's going to wear the number 12 shirt for anyone that wants to know that. I feel like I'm dreaming. It's been my dream since I was a little boy to join this club. It's an absolute privilege. This is my club, so I couldn't be more delighted. I'm glad to be here, and I can't wait to get started. I want to be the best I can be, and this feels like the perfect opportunity to test myself against the very best players 
in the Premier League. He says, players have come to West Ham from the Championship and progressed to international honours. That's something you can't ignore. The manager's track record of bringing players through was the big motivation of me joining the club. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be a West Ham player. Things you love to hear. Um, So let me uh, read some of the comments out and I'll give you a little bit more information in the type of player or shall I go through that just now of what we've got. So um where are we i've got it here he was born in brentwood in essex in january of 1999 he played for his local club ongar town before joining ipswich academy at the age of seven he'd spent 15 years at the suffolk club before making his first team debut in the championship over birmingham city at the age of 18 later the same season he joined luton town loan and played 10 times to help them win promotion to league two and also won ipswich young player of the year Award That spell at Kenilworth Road, continued development, convinced Ipswich manager Paul Hurst at the time to make him a first-team regular at the start of 2018-2019 season, still just aged 19. Hurst's replacement, Paul Lambert, was also a fan and Downs made 99 appearances for the Tractor Boys, um, but they were in League One at the time. And then Russell Martin, who was the Swansea manager, moved for his services in August of 2021. He settled quickly into the uh, Welsh club, on his return to the championship, he took the number four shirt, totaling 39 appearances in all competitions. And of all the midfielders in the division, Downs ranked first in pass completion percentage and second in passes made per 90 minutes, illustrating his strong influence on the game. Downs does seem to have good spatial awareness, um, just like he does in the attacking end. He's able to identify spaces in the defensive end as well now he is quite mobile on the pitch and this can be seen when he presses with the ball he is also an extremely aggressive player and he often commits into a challenge he's mm. not scared of getting stuck in a little bit like a pit bull-esque type player his defensive positioning is very impressive and that helps him make a lot of interceptions in the game he ball he's a ball winner he wins it and he's got good skills which allows him to consistently break down opposition attacks by intercepting passes in the middle of the pitch. Downs is also a very, very good 1v1 defender. For the most part, he can maintain his ground and slow down the attacker, but he can essentially always get his foot on that ball. He is a very good tackler. He's naturally aggressive. He repeatedly hunts the ball like a, like a you know, a, someone out in the, the, the world of hunting. I don't know what you call them. Um, hunting a bloody deep oh, i shouldn't be saying it really because it's illegal now in it um <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't get beaten in a lot of 1v1 situations and when he does he is fast and he's quick enough to recover and that's what we i think that's exactly what Moyes is looking for in that position mm. the question i've got for you though russ and we have haven't even gone through the comments yet bringing him in what does that what does that mean for Connor coventry because apparently we're in the market again for another center midfielder there's a reason why he's got it on loan and he went back out on loan when we sort of need don't forget we sort of need it was a time where we sort of needed central midfielders um and he went out on loan again didn't he when he came back to the mk don so for me um Moyes, i think he's his fourth choice if if that to be honest um i think Moyes would have seen enough of him i think he's given him he's given him a priest now proper pre-season see what happens i know it looks like we're on the hunt for another one um but we'll see i don't think it's as urgent um i think connor carpentry could come in and do a job um but we are as you said we are light in that midfield position um i know you said that four nows was playing there when you saw him at st andrews and stuff and there's always an option there as well um but uh, this is make or break for for you know, for Connor Coventry, really, this season, in a similar way to Josh Cullen had a, had like a season where he, this was a season he had to break in, or he has, to, or he's gone. Um, and I think this is this season for Connor Coventry, and I don't think it's going to happen. Um, <laughs> yeah, you do have your cap on backwards. <laughs> I saw you're so I don't, cool. I just don't think a suit a cap forwards, to be honest. Mm, I've never, you, I've never you, worn one. Yeah, but you, when you did that, you look, it looked about, you looked about ten years older. It looked really funny. You wearing a cap the other way around. Now you look like ten years younger. Um, 
yeah, I think Connor. Oh, I, I think his days are not his days are numbered at West Ham, but I think they could well be if there's uh, if if one more comes to the door. Simmons is sort of it's a Diop really, you know. Now it's a Diop was, you know, off to Fulham potentially, and five, you know, he's fifth choice um, centre back. Connor Coventry could be fifth choice midfielder really. Do you not think though that when you, I mean, when we're linked to a player, right? I've explained to everyone we do a little bit of due diligence we scout yeah. report them we look at their videos maybe on youtube and, and i know it's not ideal because i know you can't make a judgment solely on a, a video but we can only work with the tools that are in front of us so when you do watch them there is a kind of a kind of I don't, I, I, he's, he's, he's reasonably similar to declan rice there's a well, there's well, a I Declan think... rice-ish vibe about him there's, I, th- I think, I think uh, to be honest, there's there's a similarity there. There's a similarity with Mark Noble as well. Um, you know, we don't. It's it's not nice to admit, but you know, next next summer he might not be here, Deck from Rice. Um, so rather than having to bring in someone completely different, brilliantly brand brand new, having some continuity there isn't a bad thing. Um, so. Yeah, it's it's not nice to think of it that way, but um, yeah, he does have a bit of Declan Rice about him, and so you know, and the great thing about the way he can play is he can interchange with Suchek or Rice. So you know, it's not just we have to have one or the other. Um, there's there's three for two spaces now, and if you know, if, if I keep saying Wally down, that's an annoying thing. If Flynn um, has a good preseason or, or what's left of preseason, who knows what's going to happen? But uh, I, yeah, I know what you I, mean, though. Well, epic hash time is saying it's entirely possible that this geezer won't get a single Premier League appearance. I don't. I, I. I actually don't agree with that. I actually think he will play some form of football. He'll definitely play more game time than what Alex Kroll got. And yeah. um, David Moyes has been heavily involved in this signature. He signed him permanently. I mean, ten million pound from the Championship is 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 not cheap for a player coming no. from the Championship. I know we signed Bowen for a lot more. But he was a goal scoring player and, and and downs isn't so they kind of naturally are valued less if you mm. look at Grealish in comparison to other players that do goal that's why some teams laugh at West Ham's valuation of of Declan Rice because his stats in terms of goals and assists don't read similar to what Jack Grealish does but it's just his all-round game of football and, and that's where Flynn Downs comes into play so i i or epic i really think he's gonna get some form of game time i mean it's a big yeah. deal bringing in a 23 year old into the first team squad 10 million pound from the championship who's played so, over 150 football yeah. league games and it's a big deal for him to come as well do you know what i mean you know as, as we said by all accounts what we hear is palace you know we've basically pulled me yeah, a palace with your pants down really um on this one and you know patrick vieira was was you know and he's he's had quite a good hit rate with the signings he's brought in for Crystal Palace. In all honesty, um, if he rates him, then you know as well, it, it just gives you a little bit more justification maybe as well. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it, you're totally right. It's just how we do our business. We do it we do it quickly and decisively when it when it suits us. It seems. And uh, as I said, that's that's number three in the in the door now. Absolutely. Very excited. Shall we give everyone the video that they want to see, which is everything you need give to know video. about? Flynn give them the video. Give them the video. Here we go. Enjoy this.
Little cheeky video, everything you need to know on... I was thinking, mate, you've just put it down to me. Wally, I keep saying Wally, I can't get it out of my head. I know, Wally... Like, I, 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 there isn't a relation, is there? No, there's not. I've, I, I did do a little bit of uh, research when I was looking through some pictures last night. Yeah. I think in uh, Downs, Downs Swansea, and a, a picture of Wally Downs holding a baby came up, so it made me investigate <laughs> a little bit more, but no, there is no connection there. Uh-oh. <laughs> You're choking me. You are saying, how do you know if I'm coming or going the cat back to front? I don't, mate. I don't know if I'm coming or going. I've got three kids under the age of six. Oh. And I literally don't know if I'm coming Well, or I've going. just had some bad news. My mother-in-law's bathroom's not going to be ready for another three weeks. She's staying here for another three weeks. Uh, Flo's buzzing. She's back. Like, she knows. She's laughing at the fact that. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, look. I mean, look. That's, you know, we've got. That's it now. There's, there's a, the third man's in now. Bosh. Bosh. Third man is in. If third man is, and I think I can update my my spreadsheet now. Um, <laughs> now you know Downs is in there now, so we've got Downs there now. Another yeah, green. Yeah. One hundred and twenty players we've been linked to now, and um, we've now signed four, including Kelly. I haven't included. What Kelly are the yellows? Yet. What are the yellows? Yellows are when they sign a new contract. So Eddie and ah, Ketia, uh, he signed a new contract um, for Arsenal. Costics signed a new one for. Eintracht Frankfurt for another year, and uh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff. There you go, happy days. Uh, Dig De- Guzzi is saying Downs is terrible, and he's a Swansea fan, he is not that good. But I mean, literally, De Guzzi, it sounds like you're the only fan that's saying that because I'm hearing a lot of Swansea fans that are saying that West Ham have got a hold of a top notch talent. So, yeah, um, JT is saying, Oi, oi, the West Ham boy signs, absolutely. Uh, Doug Guzzi, have you seen him play? Uh, Matt is saying Moy's getting in the players he wants still leaves money in the budget for another central midfielder yep. Diop's sale basically paying for both Ariola and Downs is very good business and very not West Ham well yes. Matt not the West Ham of old not the West Ham of old the new West Ham the new West yeah. Ham and, 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 and you look at and also you look at how someone like City have done their business and Chelsea are doing their business hopefully with us soon so you know City go and, and sell you know Gabriel Jesus for 35 million bring in Phillips for 45 million, you know, so they're only a 10 million net spend, really. Chelsea look like they're going to get Sterling in, hopefully sell us Brozier. So, you know, there's this sort of like, and, and we're, we're a similar thing. He said, if we sell, sell Diop, that's pretty much put us down to, as he said, Ariola and, and Downs his, um, Downs his money, really, which is phenomenal. Two Absolutely. for one job. Absolutely. Trini Hammer, buzzing that you finally <laughs> got your prize, mate. Brilliant. And please, Trini, tell me, did you like it? So for, I, don't, I don't mind telling anyone, but um, Trini is a channel member. And as part of being a channel member, we do regular draws. Yeah. To It's like a raffle, really, you could say. Um, so Trini won last season's... So yeah, which was yeah two two months ago, three months ago, something like that. I can't remember. Last season's home top yeah. signed by a lot of the squad, not all of the squad, but a lot of the squad... Weather certificate of um, authenticity. Authenticity, yeah. So that is uh, with you now, Trini. It's not obviously um, framed, but I'm not going to lie to you, Russ. I'm loving the backgrounds. It's looking the best. Look at the both backgrounds. I know, I know. I've got some more coming to. I've got just, some more coming as well. Like just, just to put this, here. just to put this in, and then <laughs> that. Hobbycraft, yeah. I know what's hit them. I tell you, Hobbycraft, yeah. they're like, we, we've had a rush on these on these 30, 30 by 30 shadow box frames. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're good, they're good. Although, I, I mean, I'm, I'm making sure I'm getting the collar in, which affects slightly the... Uh... You get the what? You get the white line, don't you? That's the yeah, trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can like you probably cut that out, I reckon. Anyway, it's, yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> nice. a different ball game. Yeah, got to say, that's some solid piece of work from Mikey. Good to see you, mate. But anyway, sorry, back onto that. If you are interested in becoming a channel member, hit the option to join, and then you can get entered into regular draws. I think we're looking for two more guys because they've won draws, but they haven't contacted us yet. Smudge Smudger, and I put it on the I put it on the community tab. Yeah. Smudge Smudger won the. I've got it here. Won the Tony Cotty. And Machiavelli sign print. Here you go. Bush, bush, bush. Nice. Yep. And uh, I can't remember the lad's name. It's not, I'll put it on the community tab. But he won the Trevor Brookin one as well. So, yeah, yeah. get that out to them um, ASAP. Oh. And then, as I said, we're going to start doing the um, ah, I was like a weekly draws with Untuck It. So yeah. that'll be from next week. 
I want to bring this comment up. Gary Edwards says, is this the next level signing we were promised? Nothing changes at West Ham. What this Ooh. signing is, is a promise that David Moyes made when he first came back, which was following a specific model, a Red Bull model, bringing in younger players. So this signing meets that criteria. Mm. So I get it, Gary. I get it. I get we want more. I get it. You want that. But yeah, I get equally, that. E equally are the players that we are, you know, I don't know, is, 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 is a 50 million pound striker going to be the answer for West Ham? I'm telling you something now, Russ, right? We've been having this conversation. I think Gary in the chat was saying to me, he's hearing that Okoflex has been doing wonders in training. And mm. so when I was at St. Andrews, I was answering Gary and I was saying that, yeah, I, I, I thought Okoflex was stepping up to the mark. He did. He was finishing, was mm. really good. I'm telling you now though, mate, Antonio's beast mode. He is yeah. in some shape, even mm. now, literally one week into preseason. And he looks like he's got a bit of a buzz on the go. Mm. And I'm telling you now, mate, like, it's going to take a lot to move him out of that position. It'll I mean, he's, I mean you know, realistically, last year, I don't think he had a hamstring injury, which has always been his, his Achilles heel, you know, so to speak. It's been the hamstrings. And obviously, he's changed his diet, apparently. And, and and that made I know he's had a few knocks, but I don't think it's been the hamstring, um, which we know have, have been like jelly. Um, in terms of next level, I, I think it is next. I think it's 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 the next it's the next step. I mean, we in the chat today, someone we were talking about all these players and we, we, we're linked with, and obviously we showed we showed a, a picture of them. You know, uh, all of them. So if I show you all of them here, a hundred and twenty odd players we've been linked with. There's not any, realistically, or maybe one or two, but they're not 33-year-old people coming to the end of their careers. It's not, you know, and that was always the West Ham way. We'd get someone on who would have, you know, a year left. Or, you know, we say you've got no progression. You've got no, it's a one-season wonder. I mean, they come in, most of the one-season wonders come in and do all right for us. But they're on a lot of money. You know, you think back in 2008, we had like the likes of Freddie Lundberg and these guys who were just there for a payday. I don't think um I don't think Flynn's here for a payday. You know, he's here to play, he's here to play for his boy and club. It's it's a bit of an old school signing in a weird way because he could have gone to Palace, but you know, but he's he's you know, obviously we've we've stepped in there and he's obviously he's he's probably more buzzing. He you can imagine. It's like one of us signing for West Ham. We would be we wouldn't be able to sleep. We would not be able to sleep. You know, it's it's his dream to play for his, his boy and club. And um, there's something a little bit special about it. That's why I'm really excited about it because it, you get that extra level. You know you know he's going to play because it's his job, but he's going to play with his heart because he's a West Ham fan, just like exactly. Mark Noble did. Um, and I think it is next level because it shows that next step forward. Yeah. You know, it's not just uh, one season in isolation. It's with him and with Aguerd and Zuma and Areola. We've got now a spine of a team which could be here there for the next five years, realistically. Yeah. Um, very exciting. No, absolutely. This comment from Matt says, best pass completion percentage of any English player across five main leads in England with 93%. That's 2% more than Declan yeah. Rice. Yeah. I think, it's even, I think it's even more than Matt. I think, I think it's because it had, um, that, that's, that graphic you sent us had um, bloody Bernard Silva and, and Hoiberg, who aren't English. Um, I think it's midfielders across all the top five leagues, isn't it? Um, yeah, 93, Wright Rice, 91, Rodri, 91, Grimes, who also plays for Swansea, 91, yeah, Hoiberg, 88, and uh, yeah, and Silva, 89%. Yeah. Exciting. Exciting yeah, times. Absolutely. Vinay says Ongar used to be at the end of the central line. He did. He was the track at Epping. Downs played for Ongar. He did. Yeah, he came, did. From Brent, came from Brentwood. Um, and uh, yeah, he did. But apparently they're like, looking at opening that track, a bit of track again, Vinay, just saying that. Anyway. Daniel says, is he Noble's replacement or Suchek? As it looks like we're still after another midfielder. Noble. Noble. Noble's replacement. Yeah. Uh, Peter says, 10 yellow cards in a red last season. Um, Noble's replacement. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's that sort of terrier-like midfield player that I think is a bit old school. And actually, I think he suits the West Ham way of playing. You know, he's got a skill. He's got a pass on him. But also, he can put a tackle in. All right, okay, cool, yeah. Very, very similar in style to Calvin Phillips. He, without a doubt, 100% is a long-term Mark Noble replacement. You've got to trust in what Stato says. Stato knows what he's talking about. Um, we need some bite in the midfield from Trini. Um, watch him in World of Football. Um, this means Moyes doesn't make Coventry. We'll have to wait and see if he brings someone else in. Uh, um, 
Russet's doing that jumping thing again. I oh, know, I did tell him that. But I yeah. Uh, I can't even find where it's gone. I can't, I can't actually Stop. say it. Uh, Matt, Rashane said when he came back at the end of the season that Coventry hadn't made the cut and was likely to let go, be let go in some way again. Um, Vinay says we need squad depth for five subs in cup games. Keep Coventry. Um, we're not surprised me if he goes quiet now and then all of a sudden we're close to signing a mm. left back. Yeah, 100%. Or no, Dab's probably the complete opposite. We'll probably get linked to about 40 more million players and yeah. none of them will sign for West Ham. <laughs> Um, I I, jo I joked with uh, I joked with Russ last night. Well, I didn't joke. I was being serious. I was trying to be clever because um, I obviously we knew that the the um, announcement for the new strip was coming out this morning, and you heard the rumors about the L word going to yeah. America. And I was like, oh, I bet you West Ham are going to sign him. I bet you it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> and then uh, and I said, if I was a betting man, I'd put a fiver on it. And then I texted Russ this morning and said, yeah, they lost the fiver. Yeah, the lost the fiver, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, Matt is saying another centre midfielder, a winger, left back, and striker. Um, Scott R saying having Coventry and Downs off the bench is a great forward progress. Three years ago, we'd have had two 32 year old loanies that are collecting a paycheck. Scott nail on the bloody yeah. head. Peter says, can see Coventry being sold for around 500,000. Uh, good teams have cover for every position, so ideally, two players for each position. Mm -hmm. um, I love a player that makes a slide tackle. India 198 for eight after 20 overs in the T20 against England. Cheers, my man. Uh, Vinay says, poor Coventry will be loaned out again. I think I've caught back up with the comments to the section. Um, Scott says, Anton, he changes direction just like Rice. Um, Epic says, we need goalkeeper two with Fab and Randolph about to leave the club. Fab ain't leaving the club. No, he ain't leaving now, like, two years see. now. Yeah. Um, where are we? Yeah, Fab signed a new contract. Anton, you're more Eminem than an Eminem. Yep. Yeah, you're more an Eminem than Eminem. Yeah, very good. Yep. Yeah, I like that one. Very good, Pete. Uh, that says, I think once he breaks into the team, he'll be one of our best players. He's got that. I think he's he's got that potential. I think it's yeah. it, it's that it kind of, you know, I've, I've been thinking a lot about the Bin Rama situation, for example, and tomorrow's mm. daily video is going to be what about my predicted... 11 will be for the season. Um, and I'm even putting my prediction in just now without us signing. I know we're going to be signing more players, but I feel mm. confident enough to put my prediction in. I don't mm. know if you've seen the thumbnail made for the video, Russ. It's the no. first time I've ever put me on it. First time. Oh, no. You have one of those? No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> but I'll, I'll let you see it. I'll let you see it tomorrow. I like I'll it. I like it. it I like it. But I think you can. I think, you know, I think, I think as we're saying, you know, it's like, you know, one to eleven, old school one to eleven. It's a good side. It's just the next twelve, thirteen, fourteen that's always been the that has been the issue for us last season. And now, hopefully, with no injuries, we'll have four. Because I imagine Diop will will go to Fulham probably. Four good, four good centre backs, senior centre backs. That's not including your boy and Baptiste and people like that. Plus that central midfield position. Now with Downs, you've got three good central midfielders. Potentially con cover con like Connor Coventry, plus Lanzini can play in that position, plus Four Nails can play in that position as well. So that's covered. It's just that sort of left side uh, worries me. That's that's what I would like us to, to address a little bit, um, just cause to give us a bit more cover on that side. Yeah, absolutely. Howard Hill says, as a replacement for a current, this is one of the shrewd business. I don't think Coventry is going anywhere. So far, I'm happy with the signings and the way they've been done. More of the same. Please, Mr. Moyes from Mike. Um, Budgie's in the house, even in gents, even in chatty people. Hope you're well, Budgie. Mm, Budgie. Um, Chris Harris, I won't lie, his height concerns me a bit. Well, I'll tell you something. Something I learned from doing my research on him was for a five foot eight lad, he is able to leap and he is extremely confident in winning aerial battles, which is very unheard of. But there are people that have got the ability to leap really high leap mm. really high and uh, you know it goes back to uh, it's really random here but a player used to play in the nba called mugsy bogs could dunk the ball no problem at all when he was in his five footers so um he's probably around about your height russ is luck for me yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i know what you mean i understand that but i think i think that now the you know you've got enough you've got enough height in in the team you know and actually someone like a, a little nippy you know, five foot eight, still almost, it's still average height, isn't it, really, I think? Uh, I mean, Joe Cole's average height, based on uh, 
he's five foot nine, nine and a half or whatever. And I think the average height is five foot nine in the UK. So, um, yeah, it's not, it's not, he's not, it's not a shrimp, you know, he's, he's got a bit of, he's still got a bit on him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, happy birthday to you, my man. Happy birthday, happy birthday Ian. Ian. Yep. Hope you're saying well, mate. This makes Warburton our marquee signing. I think Warburton is going to be, I, I done a little piece on him again on Hammer's headlines yesterday. And, um, I, I kind of evaluated what he was saying about, you know, he was talking called the long breed, I think it was called, and it was talking about mm. his philosophy. And um, it's really interesting to 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 listen. He's he's a really interesting man. He's a really yeah. interesting man. I think what, yeah. what what you know when he's older and he releases a book, I think it would be a really good book. He's got many interesting stories. Yeah, I think it's also been really, in... pivotal, been really pivotal role us in bringing through young players. Yeah, and and and, is... and I wouldn't be surprised if he's had Moise's ear about Flynn. You know. He, because I remember we were looking at him when he was at Ipswich. I'm pretty sure we were, and he went to Swansea. And obviously, he was he was only a youngish lad. I Warburton's come in, and you know he he wants to. He's, he's, I, was, I read, I listened to your piece, and he, he wants to play some sort of attacking style as well as sort of maintain that defence. You know, and, and by the by the sounds of it, you know Flynn's got a bit of a he's got a great pass completion rate, and so he would fit into that mould quite nicely moving forward. And I wouldn't be surprised if my old Mark had a word in Moisey's ear or Moisey asked him his opinion because obviously he's been in the, he was in the championship last year uh, as obviously manager of QPR and I'm sure they was uh yeah he would have given his blessing or um or had a word about you know how, how well he played against them when he played against Swansea absolutely absolutely I'm just trying to find where my jumped again Downs is a replacement for Noble uh, the striker is the main thing um Apparently, Downs is a magnet for red cards. He apparently draws in so many fouls from a style of play. So mm. um, we, we'll have to see there as well. Did Antonio have his shorts around his neck in training? He absolutely pulls his shorts so far up that he looks like he's wearing no shorts. Why um, did he do that? Surely he's just. Yeah, I, know, he, he, I noticed that when he came off of um, the training at St. Andrews, he actually mm. took his top off and he pulled his shorts so far up. That I actually think someone ran over to him and said, "Be me to put your top back on because there's kids over there." Because he actually borderline looked like he just had pants on. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Right up. I mean, he was ripped. He was ripped, and he can get away with it. And I said to Mary, "I was like, do you want me to do that?" And she's like, "No, no, you're right. You're right. If you if you budgie smugglers, yeah. <laughs> right, pulled out to there. Yeah. Or maybe your manscapes box shorts. They're very good." Absolutely. As much as I hate to say this, all things are pointing to the fact that we're still seriously struggling to attract top tier players. Well. We have to wait and see. Ariola, top mm. tier. You could say Aguerd. I mean, Champions League experience, Moroccan yeah. international, got a lot see, of I, European. See, I, I, I think I think Ludd said the same thing today. And actually, as I said, 120 odd players. We haven't put a bid in for 120 players, and the only, we we only assume we 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 you know, these top tier players we're looking at because what what the papers say. And I don't think we are as have you know we can attract good team, good players, but the right players. And maybe the top tier players aren't the right players for us. It, it seems a bit of a, I know it seems a bit silly, but actually it's about fitting the Moyes system. We know we've gone out and bought players before who don't suit the system and then they piss off after 18 months. The Hallers, the Felipe Andersons, you know, Ben Rama really hasn't hit the ground running as we all thought he was going to do. Lukaku at Chelsea, you know, they went and got Lukaku and he's gone back after a year, you know, back on loan to Inter Milan. So it's not necessarily about attracting the, the right player, the top tier players, it's about attracting the right players. And this one, this shows if we want to flex our muscles, we can do. We can do, and we have done to get this one over the line. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we get Noble on now. He's hung up his boots. Listen, I'm telling you something right now. Trying. Mark Noble will be one of the toughest guys, especially after he's retired. But if there's a man that I'm going to put the faith in, it's the man beside me. We've had words. <laughs> We've I had do words. hope Equa plays tomorrow. It'd be interesting to see Equa actually. Um, he's a unit. He really is a unit, and I think mm. he's got a, a, a bright future ahead of himself. I really do. Um, and Okaflex as well. I tell you what, though, Russ, I mean, because the squad is thin as it stands, so Fowl's not there, Suchek's not there, Bowen, Rice, there's Ben Johnson's not there, mm. several players aren't there, Aguerd, Ariola, of course, Noble, Kroll, um, Martin, loads of players aren't there. If, if these players step up and get a chance and and, and like if Okoflex bangs in goals left, right, and center over the preseason, mm. and Equa steps in there and just does phenomenally well, 
these players could be saving West Ham a shit load of money. Yeah, yeah, it could be, and you're right. I mean, they're not, isn't it next week they report back, I think. Because yeah. um, I know it's Tommy Suchek's training in at Slavia Prague at the moment. He's not he's not back yet, but they're still doing training. Yeah. You know, <laughs> give that yeah. some time off, mate. Um, so, yeah, more than possible, this, this, this first game. And obviously next week, you've got the, you've got the split game, haven't we? Um, Boreham Wood and whatever it is and, and Ipswich or Luton or something like that. Um, so again, that's going to be split 50, 50, I'd imagine first team and under 23. So these boys have got a couple of games to really, you know, put their place on the squad for this season. Cause we've yep. got nine subs on the bench, haven't we? Absolutely. Last couple of questions then before we head, what do you think of the away kit? I love I it. I like it. Yeah. I, I like, like it. it. Yeah, but I just said I to Russ this morning, it's just, it's just, I just get a little bit annoyed with the clubs. I know they all do it. But just releasing the club atop every year, it's like, you know, I got Freddie the new home top. But Joey's a baby. Mila looked at the top and she said, "I wanted one," and I, I'm just like, it's so much money. It's just yeah. so much money. I mean, as as I, I mean, as I said to you, Joe fucking loves. Sorry, Joe. It's like nine o'clock. Yeah, I'm not used to doing it at nine. O'clock. Joe loves the new kits every year because, like, she has does have to think about what to get me for Father's Day, Christmas, and my birthday. Because it'll be first kit, second kit, third kit, that, and you know, so we'll get and the you know the third kit will probably be that white kit with the orange thing, um, which I probably won't get. But um, yeah, but then flows is flows isn't flows. She's quite funny. I show you the kits and I said, yeah, what one do you want? Oh, I quite like my pink one, Daddy. Yeah. like the breast cancer one and they probably do yes. another one in in august in october anyway so yeah. I'm, i'd rather spend the money on her on that because at least you know it's going to a charity yeah. rather than and, and you're right brentford are the only club really to have done it um to have, have kept their shirt for another year um but that's as you said that's only five percent of the premier league clubs isn't it yeah yeah it's, it is bad isn't it it is bad yeah let's everyone say hi to dalek cyber leader Hope you are safe and well, Mr. Dalek. Um, don't worry, we can see all your comments. I've put them up as we've gone along. I just don't think you've actually asked many questions in the comments. So <laughs> there you go, Mark Warburton's from our area. There we so, go. So there you go, um, Dalek. I hope you're well, mate. <laughs> um, but anyway, any last things you want to say, um, Russ? Uh, no, come on, you irons. <laughs> <laughs> as, no, as I, 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 as that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's good. It's three down. Who's next? Hashtag uh, who's next? Absolutely. So tomorrow you'll be getting uh Hammers Daily, West Ham Daily, Hammers Headlines. And then we'll just go from there. I mean, if we sign someone else, we might do another sporadic show. <laughs> yeah, and then really. we've got and then we've got the weekend, so we'll have um Harry doing another video um probably uh, probably that might be on the sunday now um but on either or and there's another hammers in hot water where we talk about um the man the myth the legend that is javier margas and his time at west ham and his time leaving west ham and his time after west ham which is arguably more interesting than his time at west ham yeah absolutely (laughs) absolutely no i'm just doing that kind of gradual Music's coming on and it's coming to an end. <laughs> it's, it's it's always like the equivalent of the bar, you know, yeah. digging the dick. Come on, bring your bring your glasses in. Bring your glasses in. And like I said, um, and as we always do, if you are interested in becoming a channel member, please hit that option to become a channel member. If you are new around here and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscription button. All you need to do is click that button wherever it is on whatever contraption you're watching. There is a little bell notification. If you hit that bell notification, that will notify you when our shows do go live. We're on the march. Don't care what anyone says. 20,000 subs, Russie boy. We've got five more months to do it. So if you are watching and you haven't done it, hit that subscription button right now. In actual fact, let me just have a little cheeky look while we're at it. I know we need to go because I can hear the kids screaming in the background, but they can just hold off for a little they, bit. They can hold off. I hope, I hope the wife isn't watching this live just now. Exactly. Like, She'd be like, Anton, come on. Yeah, come on, yeah, Anton. Yeah. So we're currently at 12,397 live, live subscribers right now. So come on. If you are watching, you haven't done it already, hit that subscription button and let's see if it jumps up. If the it. subscribe button's red, it means you're not subscribed. Click it. It goes grey. Real fun. Oh, that's interesting. That's it. So because if you are watching now <laughs> and the button is red, click it. Yeah, click it. Because I'll tell you why. Let me just... Oh, uh, it oh, oh no, we it got one. We got one. Because I'll tell you for why. I'll tell you for why, Anton. Look. 
40, almost 53% of our viewers aren't subscribers. Could you imagine? Could if you, you were. imagine? <laughs> there we go. Right, cool. Anyway, listen, stay safe, everyone. And as we always do, we like to thank you, our beautiful, beautiful subscribers. I'm trying to find the video. I've got it. I'll do, uh, I'll do it. There you go. You're doing it. Stay safe, everyone. And come on, you irons. Oh, it's... <laughs>